Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome to my new Let's Play. Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome to my Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. Developed by Nintendo and Rareware. Uh, this was back in the peak when uh, Rareware was one of the most excellent video game companies of all time. Uh, they're still okay, but they're definitely not as good as they were back in these days. But, um, yeah, I really love this game. This is probably my favorite platformer on the Nintendo 64. And I'm glad to finally show it to you guys, so let's go ahead and get started. I believe I've already prepared a new file for you guys, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I was actually hoping for something random to happen right there, but it didn't really pan out. There are a few hidden secrets to this game, which I'll talk about later on after the playthrough. But yes, uh, this is how the story starts. So yeah, this uh, game kind of starts out with a uh, Snow White-like tale, which is kind of cool. A lot of games back then drew on those popular cultural references. Also, a little fun fact, uh, this game was not Banjo's first appearance. Um, Banjo actually first appeared in Diddy Kong Racing, which is actually the same story for uh, Conker, who eventually starred in Conker's Bad Fur Day. There were a lot of uh, characters that debuted in that game that, you know, didn't debut in their own adventure games until later. Oh, 
Well, you really think that would wake him up. <laughs> and that's how it all begins. So yeah, we immediately start the adventure. Uh, we're Banjo. We can't really do much right now because uh, we have to unlock all of our moves, which you can do via a somewhat long tutorial, or you can go just activate them straight away after you talk to this guy right here. So let's go ahead and do this. Listen up, I'm Bottles, the short-sighted mole. I'm Banjo, and this here's my buddy, Kazooie. Sure is a strange-looking buddy, Banjo. Can it talk? Better than you can, Goggle Boy. And that's the start of so many insults that we'll be seeing. See, the ugly witch Gruntilda swooped down out of the sky and grabbed her. Calm down, Geeky. We'll get her back. Where did she go? She flew up to her mountain lair. And there it is. It's really dangerous, so you'll probably need some training before you go up there. So here, um, we can either press A to uh, activate the training mode. Or, if you don't want to take the training mode, you can just go ahead and press B and skip all this tutorial stuff, which I am actually going to do. You will miss some funny dialogue if you do this, but... Uh, Eh. There's plenty of funny dialogue throughout this game, so... I'd rather move at my own pace through this game. Now, when I play this game, I usually uh, play it in speedrun fashion. But I'm not going to so much do that in this playthrough. Because there's a chance I'll probably be doing some race with this game at some point, so... I'm not going to really go for a speedrun run of this game. But, you know, I will definitely kind of move through my own pace and show you the best routes to go if you want to finish this quickly. But anyway, um, first we'll go over Banjo's jumping. You can press A to jump. If you press A twice, you actually get a little uh, extra jump with Kazooie. Uh, if you hold Z and press A, you'll do a backward somersault, which can actually let you reach this object right here. This is an empty honeycomb piece. There are 24 throughout the game. And uh, every time you collect, I believe, six of them, you'll get an extra piece of energy. So definitely be on the lookout for those. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have another uh, honeycomb piece up here. And if you actually jump behind here, you can find an extra life. You really don't have to worry about dying so much in this game. There are a few tricky parts, but they shouldn't force you to lose too many lives. Also, uh, we can climb up one of these trees, and I believe another one of these trees has another honeycomb piece. I think it's, uh... Is it this one? Yeah, it is. Okay. I knew it was around here somewhere. Also, you can swim underwater, so there's another piece down here. Okay, we're up to four now. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay. Next, we're going to go over attacking. Uh, normally, you can just punch with Banjo if you want. This is not very effective. Uh, you can also do a jump attack with Kazooie, the Rat-A-Tat Rap. And you also have this uh, very powerful Beak Barge attack, too. Which, uh, yeah, I can actually uh, break these rocks. Once again, you won't be using this very much throughout the game, but still, it's a useful move for stuff like this. And I guess I should also mention that you can roll into enemies, too. Like this. But anyway, the last honeycomb piece is hidden by this uh, giant flying vegetable, so let's get rid of you. 
And now that we have six pieces of the honeycomb, we can now create a new unit of energy for our health bar. Alrighty then, let's uh... Those are all the basics, all the basics you need to know. You can also mess around with the camera too, using the C buttons. I have to admit, the camera with the C buttons back in the 64 days, that was actually pretty useful. I don't know, I kind of like how um, you had buttons significantly for just the camera. It really made things a lot easier. But anyway, we are ready to go inside. So you're ready to tackle the witch now. We sure are. Show us the way, bottle boy. Cross the bridge to enter Gruntilda's lair. Look out for me inside. Good luck. So now we're going to enter the main overworld hub of the game, much like Peach's Castle in Super Mario 64 and, uh, you know, Isle Delfino in Super Mario Sunshine. But first we get a glimpse into Grunty's true plan. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time here. However, you think the transformation process would start right there, but it apparently takes a lot of time for that to power up. But nonetheless, that's going to help us out in the long run anyway. Anyway, here is the first of many collectibles we'll be getting throughout the game. These are Jiggies. Jiggies are jigsaw pieces, and we have to use them to unlock the worlds and other areas throughout this game. So, whenever you see a Jiggy, collect it, because we're going to need to collect them all if we want to beat this game. Actually, you don't have to collect them all. I think there's a minimum of, uh, I want to say 94 you have to collect? That sounds about right. But whenever you find a puzzle that has a piece missing, step on the pedestal and you can uh, place that piece inside of the puzzle. Which means we can actually enter the first world. And we can access the first world, Mumbo's Mountain. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Mumbo's Mountain's a fairly easy world. A lot of the jigsaw pieces are actually handed to you pretty much right off the bat. But still, this is a good basic first world, I have to say. Okay, Mumbo tokens, look out for these. We'll click a lot of them throughout the game. And that creature right there is a Jinjo. Uh, there are five Jinjos in each world, and... Uh, Whenever you collect all of the Genjos, you'll be given a Jiggy, so look out for them as well. In fact, I believe, uh, well not Genjo, but uh, there's another token inside here. Oh shoot, oh, I, I need to move first, okay shoot, well, well maybe I can do this, maybe I can do this if I jump right. Okay, I got it. Guess you don't need that move after all. Kind of an exploitation of the mechanics, though, but I'm fine with that. So first, you want to head over here. We'll be getting one of the most important moves throughout the entire game. If we talk to bottles right here. The Talon Trot will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving Kazooie around with the control stick. And yeah, basically with this we can now go up steep slopes. Which is very helpful. It also makes uh, your characters a lot faster, so... You're probably going to be in this form throughout a good part of the game, just getting around, because it makes things go so much faster. 
You'll definitely see me use this move a lot, so... Definitely a warning to you of that right now. And yes, there are ten Jiggies in every level. There's two Honeycomb pieces in every world. And as for those notes that I've been collecting, there's a hundred notes in every world, and you're going to want to collect those too, because you need a lot of them to finish the game. So be on the lookout for those. And yes, those are the eggs, but we need to learn how to use them first. Which we have no idea how to do that, so let's not worry about it for right now. We'll learn soon enough. Okay, what does Bottles have to teach us over here? I call this the Beak Buster. Jump into the air, then press Z to send Kazooie slamming hard down to the floor. I don't like the sound of that, Ben. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. Get used to it, Ness Girl. You'll be using it a lot. Indeed we will. So we have the standard ground pound move. And we're going to use that to uh, destroy all of these huts. These huts have some good items inside them, so collect them at your own leisure. It also has an enemy there for some reason. But more importantly, we have this Jinjo. And a 1-up, too. How nice. Yeah, grab it. Grab it. Thank you. Also, stop eating my puzzle pieces. And you can always destroy those honeycombs if you want to uh, get some free health. Obviously, they're not going to help so much here when the enemies aren't really that lethal, but still, always nice to uh, have health whenever you need it. Okay, Jiggy number three. <laughs> And Jiggy number four. <laughs> yeah, uh, it gets a lot more difficult than this in later worlds. In this world, they kind of just throw everything like right in front of you and make the hints super obvious, and which I can understand why, but... Yeah, it does get a lot harder than that for those who haven't seen this game before. In fact, it gets a lot more difficult in the sequel, where basically every single Jiggy is pretty much hidden through some kind of means that you have to, like, basically earn it. It's not just a random pickup like it is here. Also, I want to see if I can do this. I think... Okay, it's over there. I think I have an idea of where it is. I want to see if I can land in here. Not quite, but it's okay. I can grab that later. That was the first of the honeycomb pieces. But we'll have a better means of getting that later. Just want to see if I can collect it now. And we have 50 notes, which means we can actually uh, get through the first note door of the game. Uh, the thing about notes for this game, and it's actually not consistent if you play the uh, Xbox 360 version of this. But um, whenever you die in a world, all of the notes you get will actually reset. And the amount of notes you collect are going to be called your best note score. And basically, whatever you collected before you died, that'll be marked as your uh, best record and what you'll have for that world. So, um, yeah, like, let's say if I died with 99 notes, then all the notes would get reset. You have to collect them all over again, but for that world, I'd have a 99 out of 100 marked. So, yeah, you have to collect all of them and then not die in the process of that if you want to collect everything. This also counts if you leave the world, too. You don't want to leave the world, either. If you leave the world, then, uh, once again, the notes will reset, so keep all that stuff in mind. But yeah, in the Xbox 360 version of this game, they actually eliminated that, um, um, crutch, I guess you could say. So you could actually, like, die in the middle of a world and go back to the beginning of the world and actually use that as a shortcut if you really wanted to, which is kind of cheap, but hey, whatever the game wanted you to do, I guess. So there's the uh, Jinjo Jiggy. We've got that out of the way. I think we're ready to go down here now. 